Today, the feast of the Assumption of Our Lady, Holy Day of Obligation, to be here again in northern Wisconsin. In the epistle it was a, it was a, a, of the Feast of the Assumption, it's taken from the Saint to the Old Testament from the book of Judith, chapter 13. The Lord hath blessed thee by his power, because by thee he hath brought our enemies to naught. <clears throat> Blessed art thou, O daughter, <clears throat> by the Lord, the Most High God, above all women upon the earth. Blessed be the Lord who made heaven and earth, who hath directed thee to the cutting off the head of the prince of our enemies. Because he hath so magnified thy name this day, that thy praise shall not depart out of the mouth of men, <clears throat> who shall be mindful of the power of the Lord <clears throat> forever. For that thou hast not spared thy life by reason of the distress and tribulation of thy people, but hast prevented our ruin in the presence of our God. Thou art the glory of Jerusalem, thou art the joy of Israel, thou art the honor of our people. Is in the Gospel. <clears throat> Taking that according to St. Luke, chapter 1. At that at time Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed art thou who ha that hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, because he hath regarded the low and humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Because he that is mighty hath done great things unto me, and holy is his name. And his mercy from generation unto generation towards them that fear him. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. And then Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Today the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. And this is the day of the celebration of the great victory. That there shall come what is called the harvest feast and in the latter part of the summer when the time of the harvest is near that there is going to be a great harvest our lord said pray to the lord of the harvest that there be a great harvest and the great harvest is coming when the blessed virgin mary is assumed into heaven and when she is assumed into heaven she will be the queen of all of the saints of old and new testament queen of all the angels and the great crowning glory of all those will be able to see God face to face. Whoever will be able to look upon God face to face will have the perfection and the glory of Mary inside of him. So this is the feast of the great victory of Mary. But consider this about the victory, the victory and the faith of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We know that when we go back to the very beginning we mentioned the earlier sermon, this will be a part two of the consideration we had earlier today. And we consider that the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There was a great conversation that was had. And I remember the setting of this conversation. The angel Gabriel came down from heaven and he went right back to heaven. And only one girl who was 15 years old. One girl heard these words. One girl saw the angel. One girl received the Holy Ghost overshadow her, and God the Son hypostatically united himself to the humanity of Jesus Christ inside of her womb with no witnesses. She alone was there for that glorious moment upon which all of history hinges. Now when the angel Gabriel came down from heaven, he was carrying a message from the Lord to the earth. And when you consider that one day Moses went before the burning bush, and God said to Moses, Put off thy shoes, Moses, because thou hast entered a holy place. You are now coming to the place of the presence of God. Therefore put off thy shoes. And the angel Gabriel came down from heaven, 
And he was thinking the same kind of thoughts. St. Bernard speaks about this. He is bringing a message from heaven to earth. But he arrived at the house of Nazareth. And when he opened that door, he saw that heaven was already there. And he was bringing a message from the Lord, should have said normally, I have come from the Lord, and I am bringing heaven to earth. I am bringing grace to the world. I am bringing the greatest of messages to this earth, and you, Mary, are going to receive this message. But instead, when the door was opened, he saw a 15-year-old girl who was full of grace, and the Lord was already with her. Remember when Gabriel said these words, St. Bernard says, angels are never disobedient. Angels always do exactly what they're told until this day when an angel was overtaken by the beauty of Mary. He was supposed to bring a message to ask her to be the mother of God, and that's all he was supposed to do. But when he opened that door, what did he see? He saw a girl that was not yet the mother of God. He saw a girl that was conceived immaculate, and after 15 years in that immaculate life, she was more beautiful, more filled with divine love, more filled with faith, more filled with every kind of beauty, and more with God than any other creature had been with God from the beginning of time when God made Adam and Eve perfect. Remember the angel Gabriel saw Adam, how beautiful he was when he was created. He saw Eve, how wonderful she was when she was created. He saw them in their beauty and innocence. He saw them filled with grace. And he thought he would never see anything as beautiful as that before they had the tragic fall. But now he sees something so much more beautiful. And therefore, taken aback, the angel Gabriel says, Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. These words he was not supposed to say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is already with thee. This is before the Holy Ghost overshadows her. Before God the Son enters inside of her womb, the Gabriel says, Thou art already full of grace. You are already perfect. You are already most wonderful. And therefore he simply said, Ave Maria. I saw with my own eyes, says Gabriel, I saw Eve in her magnificent beauty. I saw her when she came from the side of Adam. I thought there could be no more beautiful thing, but there is. And I saw the wisdom, and I saw the greatness of Adam. And there could be nothing more beautiful than that, but there is. Now I know there is. And so he saw the beauty of Eve, and he said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst all women. And he was thinking especially of Eve before her fall. Thou art most blessed. Now who hears this conversation? No one. God the Son enters the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary when she says those sacred words, Fiat Miki, let it be done unto me according to thy word. When he says, she says those sacred words, heaven enters in a most sacred way into earth, hypostatic union happens inside of her womb, God the Son becomes man in a little house of Nazareth, and the world is transformed, and Satan is destroyed. His head is crushed because a woman said, let God's will be done. Imagine the power with which he spoke those words and the confidence with which she spoke them. She was informed that the, uh, her cousin Elizabeth was with child and that she was already in her six months in her old age conceiving a child. Therefore she was driven by charity, the first movement of the presence of God. Driven by charity, she was driven by a force that made her go to help and visit her cousin Elizabeth. And here we arrive at the second conversation, which in fact would be the first conversation amongst men. The first conversation amongst men about Jesus Christ. The very first conversation about his coming. And what happens is, our Lord, the Blessed Virgin Mary, arrives at the house of Elizabeth, and she simply says, Ave Elizabeth. And what happens when that word Ave comes forth from the Ave Maria? When she says Ave, 
What happens when she says those words, Hail, a child who is not yet born, who is in the womb of his mother for six months, who is the greatest of all prophets, whom our Lord Jesus Christ said, There will be no man like him from the beginning of time until the very end of time, for he prophesied before he was born. And St. John the Baptist, as we mentioned earlier, not yet able to crawl, not yet able to walk, not yet able to speak, leapt in his mother's womb for joy. This is the natural reaction. He is the greatest of prophets, and there are prophets of the last 4,004 years who have been waiting for Christ to come, and now a little boy, six months in his brother's womb, before three months before he is born, he hears Ave, he hears one word, coming from the mouth of Mary. And in that word, he hears Christ. In that word, he finds the presence of God, and not the spiritual presence, but the actual physical presence of God inside of that voice. Because when Mary speaks, Christ is in every sound, and Christ is in every movement that comes from her. She simply said, Ave Elizabeth, that's all she said. Ave Elizabeth. Hail Elizabeth. And by the ending of that statement, the babe in the womb leapt for joy and told his mother, This is the mother of our Lord. This is the mother of God. This is the mother of the Messiah. The mother of the King of Kings. The mother of the Lord of Lords. The mother of the greatest of all the prophets. The mother of the one we've been waiting for since Adam committed that terrible sin. She is here. And he preached to his mother. Even at this moment, how did Elizabeth learn about Christ? She did not learn from Mary directly. She learned because Mary spoke a word. The prophet heard the word inside the womb. The prophet leapt and the prophet spoke with the inspiration of Mary into the uh, ears of his own mother before he was born and then she realized God is here. The greatest of prophets, St. John the Baptist. God is here. And so, therefore, she let me let her womb in the mother's joy, and in his mother's womb, and in the state of joy. And consider this sacred conversation. And don't forget the setting and circumstances of it. The world is filled with evil. The world is completely against God. The Jews are so filled with wickedness, the people of God, that they are ready to crucify him even before he's born. And when the word is given only a few days later, a few months later, that the child might be born, that the king might be born, note these words of the gospel. It says, And Herod was disturbed, which we expect, because Herod was wicked. Which is normal, because Herod was a king. And when he heard the king of kings was going to replace him, he was very worried. But the next verse of the history we don't expect, And all of Jerusalem with him. Why was Jerusalem also worried? Why were the Jews disturbed? They hated Herod. They wanted him to be removed. Everyone hated him. He killed his own mother with his own hands. He was one of the most wicked men that ever lived in all of history. And when the word came to these people who hated Herod, the king of kings is born, the people were worried. What on earth happened to those people? The Blessed Virgin Mary knows the wickedness of these people. She sees how they are not filled with the love of God, and they're not ready for his coming, and they won't accept him when he comes. But the angel Gabriel said, This child is, is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and she believes. And consider the confidence of her conversation and the setting of it, the complete confidence in the victory that is going to come. She did not go to battle like other men. Like our Lord Jesus Christ on Good Friday, when he went to battle Holy Thursday night, what did he say? He said to his apostles, Confidite ego vici mundum. He said it in the past tense. Have confidence because I have already conquered the world. It is defeated. I have not yet gone out to meet Judas. 
I have not yet gone to my garden of Gethsemane. I have not yet gone to the cross. I have not yet risen from the dead. But I have decided. And I have, go, I have chosen to go to war against my enemies. I have chosen to go to war against the enemies of my father. I have chosen to go to war against the enemies of God. And therefore they are defeated from the moment that I made the decision. For such is the way of great warriors. What you say about General Patton? General Patton in World War II said, I wish it was like the old days. And I could get in my tank and I would go out in the battlefield against General Rommel. And if I killed him, the German general, then I'd win. And if he killed me, he won't. <laughs> That's the way you go to war. <laughs> when a child Jesus decided that he was going to go to war. There were no ifs. And so it is with great generals and great warriors. And she is more terrible than an army set in battle away. She is more powerful than all the enemies of God. And therefore, what does the Holy Ghost inspire Elizabeth to say? What did she say? Blessed art thou... The, 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 no, excuse me, the... And, and then, uh, how is it that the mother of my... And whence is to this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb, the babe in my womb, leapt for joy. And blessed art thou that hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished which are spoken to thee by the Lord. What is the, what does Elizabeth say? Blessed art thou that has already believed... Because those things that are prophesied to thee, they shall be accomplished. It is one mother of a prophet speaking to the mother of God. Do you hear any doubt? Are there any questions? There are none whatsoever. And there is no doubt. And we must understand in our present battle, we are in a great crisis in our Holy Mother, the Church. So many souls have abandoned God and gone away from God all throughout the world. Our faith is, seems collapsed. The bishops are wicked, the pope is wicked, the priests are wicked, and the faithful are wicked. And that is our church. And it seems as though the enemies are so powerful and they're about to destroy us. But what do we know? We know that the Blessed Virgin Mary is going to destroy them. We know that the victory of Mary is nigh. We know that there, were, that there will be a, cry, a consecration of Russia. We know there will be a victory of our Holy Mother. We know the enemies are going to be wiped out. And every day we're closer and closer to the victory. And every day we should be more and more at peace. And what is the reaction of the Holy Mother Elizabeth? And what is the reaction of the Holy Mother Mary? The Lord, the mother of my Lord, has come to me, and therefore she rejoiced. And those things are going to be accomplished, which are said by the angel. There is not a drop of doubt. Now, do they know the details of the fight? One of the types of Blessed Virgin Mary is Judith. Judith knew what she was going to do. With her great beauty, she went into the camp of Holofernes, and she was going to chop off the head of Holofernes. And she was going to destroy the enemies of God by removing the head of Holofernes. She went into the camp and she saw the king. And Holofernes is a great general. And he took her into his, into, his, into his tent. And he got drunk. And then she chopped off his head and brought it back to Jerusalem in a basket. She knew what she would do. What about the Holy Mother? Did she know exactly how Jesus Christ would conquer his enemies? Did she know exactly the day? Did she know exactly the plan? Did she even know how our Lord would be born in Bethlehem? He had to be born in the next nine months in Bethlehem. And Joseph was stubborn and didn't like to move. How on earth is he going to be born in Bethlehem? She had no idea how Christ would be born in Bethlehem. She had no idea at what moment he would choose to die for our sins. She did not know precisely how he would die. She did not know the way in which he would have his victory. And as we travel through the life, what does it say about our Holy Mother? She understood not these things, but she pondered them in her heart. Judith knew what she was going to do. 
the Blessed Virgin Mary knows only the victory. And she has no doubt of any kind. And she has complete confidence in that victory. And she knows that Christ is going to defeat her enemies. And as she travels on the journey, she sees all the wonderful works of God. And her life, who is called the Mother of Sorrows, is filled with so many wonders and filled with so many joys as she sees and is every day is more and more amazed by the ways of her son. He was the one who knew that it was time to walk away for three days. And when he was 12 years old, he was the one made sure that Simeon spoke to her inside of the temple when he was 40 days old. She was the one that brought a bunch of heavy drinking apostles to a party one time. And they drank too much wine and they ran out of wine. And he was not going to do anything about it, or so it seemed. And therefore she had to say, they have no wine and she knew exactly what she was telling him to do. Time for you to stop being lazy. She was mommy kicking her son out of the house. There's a time when mommy has to kick her son out of the house. Time for you to go out and do your work. Time for you to go out and die for the sins of man. Time for you to go out and do your work. And that is why our Lord said to her, Woman, what is that to me and to thee? My hour has not yet come. They have no wine. Solve the problem. What has happened? The Blessed Virgin Mary was on a sacred journey to see the victory of her son, and she never doubted for one instant that victory. And Elizabeth had great confidence, total confidence, and they were filled with joy even in the midst of their sorrows because of the realize that this is the great victory that is upon us. And, and what did our Lord say when he would come the second time? We're getting closer every day to a second coming. He said, when you hear about wars and rumors of wars, when you see nation rise against nation, when you see earthquakes in diverse places and all kinds of great natural disasters, when you see the great apostasy that's spreading throughout the whole world, what did he say to do? Lift up your heads, for your redemption is at hand. St. Elizabeth and the Blessed Virgin Mary lifted their heads and they were filled with the greatest of joy because they knew that their redemption was at hand and the redemption of all men are at hand. We must recognize this now as we are heading towards the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is at hand. And every day we're getting closer to it. And consider those devils. They cannot say her name in hell. And many, many, many apparitions of the damned have come forth to the earth and they said there is a name that we can never say in hell. And that is the name of Mary, the name of her who is the mother of God, the name of her who is the mother of him who destroyed us and defeated us. They cannot say her name. And they are so terrified of her. And that's why they lie in wait, in terrifying wait, for her heel to crush Satan and to crush all the devils that are underneath of him by that one blow of her foot. And the blow of the foot is coming. What are we to do? Live inside of the Holy Mother Mary. Stay in love with her. Stay close to her. Never let her go out from our hearts. Never let her go out from our passions. Never let her go out from our bodies. Never let her go out from us in any way. And then we are in the greatest place to be. And we'll have the best view of the destruction of Satan. We'll be in the front row seat. Whoever is in Mary's arms gets a beautiful view of Satan being crushed. We must stay close to her. Stay inside of her. And remember in this Feast of the Assumption... There is a great harvest, there is a great victory, and the victory cannot be stopped. It will not be stopped. And the victory comes because our Holy Mother said, Let it be done unto me according to thy word. And then what does this humble lady say? When the child is not yet born, when St. Joseph doesn't know yet about the child, when she is aware of the fact that he will try to put her away privately, when there has not been a single miracle or any sign other than she spoke with the angel and knows by her contemplation the teaching of the Holy Scripture. And what does he say? My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in the past tense, in God my Savior. Because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. 
Because he that is mighty hath done great things unto me, and holy is his name. She speaks in the past tense. All generations shall call me blessed, because I carry God made man inside of my womb. I will bring him to this earth, and he that is going to be born of me, this, this one is going to conquer Satan. He is going to defeat totally the kingdom of hell. He is going to rule the entire earth. His kingdom shall have no end, and all generations that call me blessed, and all generations that are fear him, they shall receive mercy. We are now several hundred generations in the year 2020. 220, 200, 202 generations away from that day. And is there any way we can be blessed? By magnifying her name. Is there any way we can have mercy? By fearing her son. And those who fear her son, and those who are, 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 have the love of Mary in their hearts, they shall be called, they shall be blessed, and they shall receive the mercy. And there's no other way to receive mercy. And so that, that all generations shall call me blessed, for thee is mighty other good things to me, and holy is his name. And generation to generation unto them that fear him is going to come mercy. But it, 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 holy is his name. And notice the power and confidence with which the Holy Mother speaks. And we speak that Magnificat every day at the office of Vespers, in the evening office of the church. And we sing these words of Mary always, and that we call her blessed always. And we recognize that there's only one way to be received divine mercy, that is to fear and love her son. And we cannot fear and love her son rightly without the love of her and the recognition that she is going to be the one who's going to bring the great victory and does bring all the victory rightly. In the Middle Ages, they used to refer to all miracles and all conversions simply by one expression. Every miracle and every conversion and every gift from God was simply called a glory of Mary. That's all. It is the glory of Mary when a child is baptized. It is the glory of Mary when someone goes to confession. It is the glory of Mary when someone is anointed. It is the glory of Mary when someone grows in the love of God in his heart. It is the glory of Mary when we believe the holy faith. It is the glory of Mary when we fight against Satan. It is the glory of Mary when the church is glorified. All things good are just simply the glories of Mary. And these are the only glories that matter. And remember also... That without the mother, there is no hope for us. Remember that all of us are going to physically die, and all of us have the stains of original sin. Why? And because of our mother. And her name is Eve. But what about eternal happiness? And what about faith? And what about good things that we receive? They also come only from our mother. And it is our mother Mary. Let us love her greatly, stay close to her always, and have complete confidence in her victory. And notice how she says it. She has believed. Not she hopes. Not she might believe one day. When she gets more evidence. She has already had enough evidence. She has spoken with the angel. She has heard the word of God. And she has believed. And so it must be with us. Do you already believe? We must already believe. With total confidence. The truth. That Satan's kingdom of the Bilderbergers and all the one worlders is already destroyed. And that this victor, this, this attempt to prepare for the Antichrist right now is already wiped out. It is not yet the time of the Antichrist. It is the time of Mary. And she is going to have her victory. And we must say we have already believed. As the wise Martha said, when Lord Jesus Christ said, Martha, believest thou this? And whoever believes in me shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? And Martha, imitating Mary, said, Yea, Lord, I have believed. Let the belief be in us, permanent, and let it never be taken away. And God will bless us, and then we will be able to see the victory of Mary, and then see her son face to face for all eternity. So God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.